What is up YouTube? My name is Eben and if you like what you see today go ahead and give that like button down there a tap. It does help. It's pretty awesome of you if you do that. And today we are going to take a look at Sylveon EX from the new Pokemon Generations expansion. Well not quite as new as it was but still. Uh, this Pokemon's got its nice dress up attack here which is moderate damage for two energy but what we're really here for is its precious ribbon attack which is 100 damage. Okay, two hit KOs most things. All right, all right, not too bad. And you can move a fair, actually you have to move a fairy energy from this Pokemon to one of your benched Pokemon. And if you do, it deals 50 damage from that Pokemon. So basically it takes an energy off itself, gives it to a benched Pokemon, and that Pokemon, the one you're giving the energy to, gets healed for 50. So it might seem a little underwhelming at first, which might be contributory for why this card doesn't have the highest price tag, but it's deceptively powerful because this Pokemon basically, because after all we are in Fairy, so we're talking about free retreats potentially thanks to Fairy Garden. Basically, this Pokemon likes to cycle with other Sylveon EXs where it's going to free retreat out of your active slot for another Sylveon. That Sylveon's going to hit for 100 or 110 with, say, Fighting Fury Belt, giving you 210 HP, which makes you quite the wall. It's going to pass that energy back onto your Sylveon on the bench heal 50 of the damage it took when it was active, and then next turn you're just going to switch out again, and you're going to do the exact same thing. So these Pokemon actually have a tremendous amount of longevity, and they're not limited to just healing each other either. They can also heal other Pokemon, of course. And shifting that fairy energy from this Pokemon off to one of your benched Pokemon means that if it does end up getting knocked out, you're not losing quite as much energy when that happens. So it's a good way to kind of grind your opponent down, and that's more or less what we're aiming to do. But our backup attacker for the deck is Mega Gardevoir, or rather our late game attacker for the deck, really. And it's Brilliant Arrow Attack. It's not about grinding down so much as just blowing things away. So essentially, Sylveon EX is going to wear them down in the early to mid game, and then Mega Gardevoir is going to come in and clean up by just smashing anything they've built up successfully against you. So just about the time Sylveon EX isn't going to be putting in the work anymore, Mega Gardevoir is going to come in, and it will put in the work. But just in case Mega Gardevoir gets damaged, obviously we can use Sylveon to heal it back up out of someone's KO range. So we are just running two of this, though, because it's not our primary attacker. But we're going to go ahead and opt for three Gardevoir EX, because after all, it's not a bad Pokemon, really. It also likes to two-hit KO things. It looks great with Fighting Fury Belt. Um, it just it just synergizes really well. So we're going to go ahead and use three of the Gardevoir EX. And we're going to be using Aromatisse here, not too surprisingly. Uh, it kind of goes hand in hand with Fairy Garden, and well, almost every Fairy deck really likes it. We only need one setup, of course, but its Fairy transferability is just too gosh darn good, and we're going to be using it to abuse our healing powers even more in this deck. Um, we're going to be running two Spritzy, of course, to support that. You can run pretty much any Spritzy, I think. I kind of like the cheekiness of having the healing sweet scent on this Spritzy, though. Just because we're doing so much healing already, I thought, yeah, why not? Why not? Let's... Let's be cheeky and do that. I'm just opting for two Xerneas in this deck because we're going to kind of search it out. And the thing is, after your first few turns, Xerneas really isn't that good anymore. So we're, we're trying out just running two regular Xerneas, and that's it. You want to go ahead and Ultra Ball him on turn one, free treat, that kind of stuff. You want to you wanna find a way to get that Geomancy off on your first attacking turn, which is probably going to be your second turn in a lot of cases. But nonetheless, we're running two of that Xerneas. We just like to set up, get that energy out of there get it onto our board. We're also running two Shaman because we definitely don't have room for Octillery here. And uh, we are also running uh, Hoopa EX because we've got so many EXs in the deck and it really helps set up our Mega and whatnot. And because of Hoopa, we definitely want to run Shaman instead of Octillery once again, just because Hoopa obviously can go get Shaman as well as two other things and we can power through our deck pretty efficiently. And the nice thing about that is, too, if this guy gets called up to the active slot, which is one of the best arguments against him is that he is a Lysander bait, a single fairy energy means that with Fairy Garden, he can retreat back to your bench. And Aromatisse moves it back off, so it's not even a waste of an energy play. So, pretty synergistic there. Just too gosh darn good not to run. Supporter-wise, we're running three Sycamores. We don't want to bomb our hand too very often, but it's just pretty much the best card draw in the format, so we can't not run it. Uh, that's, that's pretty much what that boils down to, if we're honest with ourselves. We're running three Ns, because N is very good for us, and it's good in every deck. You know, early, late, you name it. So we are running three N's, because it's good all the time, it's N. 
We've got AZ here because we can move our energies off and this just straight up heals things and it can be versus secret back. And it can also get less than ideal starting Pokemon out of our active slot. So you can say Ultra Ball your Xerneas, put it on your bench. Then you can AZ that Hoopa, Shaman, Mega Gardevoir, whatever you have in your active slot that you don't like. Oh, sorry, just regular Gardevoir EX, sorry, not Mega Gardevoir. You know what I mean. And uh, we can AZ it up and then Xerneas comes in and does his Geomancy thing. So lots of uses, early, mid, and late game. AZ is just a little too good for us not to run. We're also running Skyla. I think she's amazing in this format. Uh, and it's just so hard to work her into decks right now, which I think is the main reason she's not being played. But here, we had the ability to work her in, and she's just such a good versus secret target because virtually everything in our deck that's not a supporter is something we could potentially really want in the right situation. And even though we run many copies of it, Skyla is still just one more out to it, and it's a very easy to get one because once she hits our discard pile, those four versus seekers are all potentially Skylas to go get those cards. So, and you'll see all the things she can fetch and why she is so nice to have in this deck. But we also run one Lysander for all the obvious and all the right reasons. And we also have Hexmaniac because with Carbink and its safeguard running around, and yeah, a few other things that can also be problematic for us, and of course, File Plume. Uh, Hexmaniac is just, just a little too necessary with our main attackers all being EXs. So, unless you enjoy attacking with Aromatisse for knockouts, which I know I don't particularly, and I don't particularly enjoy attacking with Xerneas either, when it's not Geomancy I'm attacking with, yeah, we kind of have to have Hexmaniac. And in the matches where it's not important, you just discard it and forget it's there. But, uh, yeah, we kind of have to have it. We're running two Gardevoir Spirit Links, one for each of our Mega Gardevoirs. And this is definitely Skyla bait number one, because when we really need this, we want to go find it. Sky laying for it can be very nice, kind of accelerate us a bit. Especially if one of them gets prized, we'll definitely want to be able to find the other one. We're running four Ultra Balls because, well, we're going to want to definitely make sure we get the Aromatisse, we get the Mega Gardevoir, we get the Cillian, whatever it is we need for that particular situation. Of course, it's also a great setup for Shaman or for Hoopa for Shaman. Uh, you know, you kind of get the idea there. And amazingly, this is also Skylabate because just because you got four doesn't mean you're automatically going to draw one. And Skylang for that obviously can be very good, especially in the late game where you might need something in particular, especially after you Super Rod or something like that. We're running four versus Seekers, as we've already, already kind of uh, intimated. And we are running a full set of four Fairy Gardens. Uh, a lot of decks do rely on Stadiums quite a bit, and we definitely rely on our Fairy Garden to uh, keep kind of our battle plan going with Sylveon EX. So four is going to be the number. And yes, it is also Skylabate, because sometimes you're just going to have to get out of that active slot to kind of preserve prize count and stuff like that. So we are running a full four to counter other people's stadiums. Don't play it until you necessarily need it. But uh, we want to make sure we can win the stadium war if at all possible. So that is why we're running four. And keeping in our theme of fairies liking to not get knocked out, even after they've taken huge amounts of damage, we can move energies off of things with uh, Aromatisse, we can max potion it right up, and then we can move energies back. So this is just one more way we can heal up and be generally difficult for our opponent to knock out. We're also running three Fighting Fury belts. These are pretty much exclusively for Sylveon EX, but in a pinch you can slap on things like Xerneas or just the regular Gardevoir EX. Obviously Mega Evolving makes this kind of worthless, but... Uh, but if you put this on your Gardevoir, you're not planning to Mega Evolve under those circumstances. Uh, it, it's just a great way to maybe chip off a little more damage, but primarily move ourselves out of one-hit KO range for people. So pretty crucial for Sylveon's plan of switching around and healing and whatnot. Our final item is Super Rod. We've got just the one, so once again, mm, Skyla Bait. And the idea is that if our... You know, if our, like, say, one Aromatisse goes down, then that's one Spritzy and one Aromatisse, both that are in our discard pile, and any prizing of either one of the other ones means we won't be able to have our Aromatisse up, so we need a way to bring it back. And if too many energies get discarded, things like that. It's, it's just very utilitarian for us. And finally, we are running a grand total of 12 Fairy Energies. That's one in every five cards, so we shouldn't need uh, any particular way to go tutor for the energies, like Professor's Letter. We should hit them naturally, and we want to, uh, of course, have a lot of them that we can draw them manually, but still be able to geomancy them, um, and those two things won't interfere with each other too very much. And that is the deck, and until next time, like, comment, subscribe, check me out on Twitter, link is below, and I will see you next time.